Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. During the recent Federation of Canadian Municipalities Convention in Calgary, Northern Sunrise County Reeve Corina Williams posed a pivotal question to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. She inquired whether he had visited Northwestern Alberta since assuming Canada's top job, specifically to gain firsthand insight into the energy industry, as well as the unique challenges and accomplishments experienced by the region. Now, in today's episode, we have the privilege to sit down and speak with Reeve Corina Williams to delve deeper into the Prime Minister's response and to explore the current state of affairs in Northwestern Alberta. Reeve Williams will also shed light on the economic landscape, the impact of the energy industry, and the ongoing development and initiatives that are shaping the future of this vital part of Alberta and Canada. So with that, welcome to Municipal Affairs. Reeve Williams, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down with me at the FCM convention in Calgary back in June. I think it was the 7th that the question was asked. Prime Minister Trudeau was in attendance and you were one of the few lucky municipal leaders to pose a question to him. And your question was, actually, I'll let you explain. What was the question that you posed and why was it important for you to pose that question to the Prime Minister? Oh, absolutely, Chris. So welcome. And I asked the question because we're continually hearing the misinformation of our dirty oil and gas. So I decided to ask Prime Minister Trudeau if he'd ever actually been up in person to our peace region, North Peace region, to see uh, the oil and gas for himself to and that way, if he had seen our clean energy, we would not need the carbon tax if he fully understood how clean our energy was. And his answer was, I've been to Fort McMurray oil sands, which was okay. But he did state that he'd never actually been to the North region. Since then, our council has sent an invite to invite the Prime Minister to our very clean oil and gas energy sector. We, we are yet to hear a continue. So we're yet to hear a response from our invitation. We have reached out to our MP as well, Arnold Pearson, to see if he's able to assist us with the request as well. Uh, you asked the question about if he'd actually attended the, uh, if he had been in the peace region before, uh, were you hoping to hear a different answer? Because I'm imagining he has been in office now for nine years. He's probably been to majority parts of this pro uh, country. Were you shocked to hear that he hadn't actually been to your area of Canada? Uh, kind of economic driver of not only Alberta, but the Canadian economy. I can honestly say, no, I wasn't shocked because the way he talks about Northern Alberta, the oil and gas sector, I honestly don't think he has any interest to come and see for himself. He's just going to take the judgment of his other assistant, shall we say, the one particular, Mr. Stephen, that his misinformation continues and that's who he's going to listen to. Yeah, I don't think he wants to find out for himself. What would you show him if he actually did appear in uh, in the peace region and you got a chance to give the prime minister a tour? You talk about the uh, energy industry, but is there certain companies, certain areas that you would really want to show him if he actually hypothetically woke up tomorrow and said, yes, let's head out to the peace region of Alberta. He could really go out to any of our oil and gas sector we have up in northern Sunrise County. It really wouldn't matter because every single one of them are, are clean, clear energy. So it doesn't matter which one he would go to. It's I wouldn't like to pinpoint a certain a uh, company, I would prefer him to come see everything. But what I would ultimately really love to do is to have him sit at my house because I'm not that far from the oil and gas sector. 
and just ask him, what do you see and what do you smell? And then I can physically drive him maybe five kilometers to the place. And that's where oil and gas is. That's where I'd love him to see. You 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 are a big uh, supporter of the oil and gas. The I'll say energy industry because uh, oil and gas is not just the only parts of the energy industry. You are a big supporter of the energy industry in your area. You are rural Reeve. Um, give me a sense on the ground how the energy industry has transformed not only northern sunrise but the entire region as well for the betterment of not only the people of your community but the people of alberta and the people of canada the the transformations have been huge when we first came here we could we could notice some um, aroma shall we say but I would say at least the last 10 years and more that has been improved drastically the the scrubbers that they have the technology they have reinvesting any of the offsets they have because they're no longer um, gassing off their offsets they're reusing that and there's technology out there which is crucial for keeping our industry clean and you can drive around the oil and gas sector. Obviously, you want to always go with one of the, the staff because it's it's considered a, a safety issue. So <laughs> you always <laughs> want to make sure you have, a, you have a tour. But I can tell you that I met a young girl just yesterday who flew in from Ottawa. And she was privileged to actually have a flyover the oil and gas sector just because of who she was with. She expected to see fields of oil because that's what she's been brainwashed to think. That's what she's going to see. She was amazed. She saw trees, pump jacks. She didn't see this wave of black oil that she expected to see and all this pollutant she was expecting to see. So it was really good to be able to give her that observation that she can take back now to her friends she wasn't part of the government was she yes she was but okay. i just don't want to say who she was no, with no understandable and i appreciate that and i want to talk about that misinformation that you just talked about and you alluded to it in the uh co the question that you posed to prime minister trudeau about mm -hmm. seeing it firsthand do you get a sense that when people actually do see the energy industry working up close and personal, like you just said with that lady from Ottawa, that more and more people lose that mindset of, oh, it's that unethical, dirty energy industry that's polluting the world. But really, in, in essence, it actually isn't. Oh, absolutely. Because there's... There's parts of the world where oil is naturally flowing into the rivers. You think of Fort McMurray. I mean, that's a, a true case right there. If it wasn't for what we're doing with our standards of cleaning up that sector, I don't know what would happen going forward. But that the clean, I'll keep going back to that clean energy. It's when I went to Quebec, I had many conversations with a lot of the Quebecers there just because I was wearing a particular garment they could pick up of where I was from because yeah. that's what I wanted to do. And I they stopped and just hearing them, what they thought our oil and gas industry was, was absolutely shocking. And that's what I wanted to bring forward that I want the Prime Minister to be here to see it for himself to stop the misinformation that continues to go out there. You, in your original statement, when I asked you what you had asked, you talked about potentially removing the carbon tax off of, no, I'm assuming everything in, at, in your you, it is your hope. 
Put me on the ground in Northern Sunrise County for a second. How has the carbon tax affected your community, your residences? And it, do you get a sense that the increases that have been going on over the last few years, every April 1st, it increases, increases next April 1st, that people are worse off than they were a few years ago? Oh, definitely. We're we're hearing it within our, our residents, the cost of everything, the increased fuel, every and even the, for our industries, we're hearing the impacts is even having to industry, which then ultimately is going to affect upcoming investment, because if that's still there, then how are they ever going to afford to be here? Um, so can I just spoke, can I just pick up on that for a second? Because I just want to make sure yeah. I, I get this right here. Since the introduction of the carbon tax, have you noticed that people are not investing as much as they were traditionally in the past? Or have you had conversations with businesses where they say, unfortunately, just due to the economics in the world right now and in Canada, it's just not feasible for us to uh, invest in Northern Sunrise or in the Peace Region as a whole? I think it's it's more that the investment that's already here, they're very cautious of expanding. I haven't had um, really hmm. talks with any new investment that's saying, no, we're not going to because of the carbon tax. What I'm hearing is they'd like to expand, they're just cautious because they don't know how the carbon tax is going to increase as much, which will ultimately stop them from expanding. Now, you have sent a letter to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. I can, um, I have you sent a letter to the other leaders of the parties as well, whether that be NDP leader Jagmeet Singh uh, or even official opposition leader and leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, Pierre, uh, Pierre Polyev, to come up and tour uh, your area as well? Or are you, because he's the prime minister, you're solely trying to work on that face-to-face -face meeting in the peace region with the prime minister first? So we did only reach out to the Prime Minister because that's who the question was directed to. Arnold Viersen has, a, if Pierre is, is elected, he will come up here, which I'm sure he absolutely would. He would, he would be open to come up here. Okay, and nothing about Jagmeet's, nothing for the NDP leader or even the Green Party of Canada leader? Just the two that you're not looking a, at? Yeah. Not a, yet. Not yet. <laughs> um, in the broader sense, though, because this is a time when a lot of things are starting to happen because we're out of the, the cold months and we're into the warmer months. How is the Peace Region, Northern Sunrise County, doing right now? Because it is, seems to be a very hard economic days that a lot of people are under. And as Reeve of your county, as Reeve of your uh, community, you see firsthand the struggles that people are going through or the accomplishments that people are going through. What's your sense on the ground of how people are doing today in as of recording this in Northern Sunrise County? Uh, we... We definitely see the stress. We we hear the stress in, in families of paying for everything. How how are they going to work their school sports? How are they going to pay for food? How are they going to go on a holiday? Where are they going for a holiday? Likely staying closer because they just can't afford anything to go travel further. But for us, we did reduce our taxes in 2023 and 2024. We went from five in 1,000 to three in 1,000. So in 2024, that meant a 25% re reduction for our residential taxes as a way to help the e economy of our, our residents. I, I, it's, I want to ask a question on the energy industry, but I want to sort of pose 
it has to do with the energy industry and it has to go back to one of the conversations that you and I originally had on this show, which is about the unpaid oil and gas uh, property taxes that uh, municipalities are not receiving. And I'm kind of throwing a, a curveball here in this line of questioning, but I, I, th I need to ask this question because I want to know follow up. Um, How's that going? How's the state of affairs for the unpaid oil and gas industry? Because uh, municipalities are struggling right now and municipalities are trying to find ways to cover costs. And when you have a 25% tax reduction for residents, that means that service levels may have to be reduced or infrastructure projects may have to be reduced. Uh, do you get a sense that you're collecting those unpaid oil and gas property taxes that you've been owed? So for us, they're, they're definitely better than they were. Oh. We are seeing some of the bad players are trying to come with agreements. So we're having agreements where they can pay a certain amount each month to try and help them. Um, during the time we did send out that they could pay quarterly without any penalties for that 2022 year. So we were trying to assist them as much as we can. I think opening that door allowed them to want to work with us a little more. So we're, we don't see too many of the bad players that are out there. In fact, most of our bigger companies, we've never honestly had an issue with them. They're, they, they pay on time. They're, they want to be in Northern Sunrise County, and we certainly appreciate them calling Northern Sunrise County home as well. Because most of our tax base, 5% is re residential, so it's a very small amount compared to our industrial tax base. So that 25% reduction for our residents was really great for, for them. It's a great assistance to them it's not going to affect us in trying to do our service deliveries. If you had the chance, and I'm going to ask the final question before I let you go. If you had the chance to speak to the prime minister today, right here, right now, in more depth than you did prior to the one, the question that you asked at FCM, what would you tell him? I would tell him that he needs to come with me I'm in a truck and I want to drive him around. And as I'm driving him around, I want to tell him, what do you see? What do you smell? Because that's the biggest concept that I continually hear of the misinformation that we we're, we smell of oil and gas. We're, we have oil fields everywhere. We've got oil sands, which we don't have. We don't even have any oil sands. And he still keeps using that word which I wish he wouldn't, but I, I want him to know that we're not the ogres that he portrays us to be. When we, I think that was one of the biggest parts of FCM that I felt was the most advantageous was to actually speak to people outside of the province and they got to know us for who we are. We're not these horrible, bad people that FC or the prime minister has made us out to be. We are very conscious of our energy. We're very conscious of keeping Alberta clean. And he needs to know that. And I wish Stephen would come. I can't pronounce his last name. That's why I don't say it. Gilbo. Gilbo is his last Gilbo? name. Stephen Gilbo. It, Gilbo. Yeah. Gilbo, Gil, that's how I pronounce it. If I'm wrong, I apologize, yeah. Minister. Um, so you, have you invited the minister as well? We did put a tagline that he, he would be invited as well in the invitation. And I hope he does come up because he's one of the ones that miss that portrays the misinformation the most because how often do we hear how dirty our oil and gas is and that if that message needs to stop i want to ask a poignant question and i apologize if it's a little rude for the question but i think i, I think you're ready to handle it do you feel represented by this prime minister no not at all if anything i feel Alberta supports rest of Canada. We know that. 
and we're very proud to do that. It's just such a shame that we're not presented to be the respect that we deserve. And the rest of Canada is blindsided by this because the information they're given is not is not correct. So they're only they can only know what they're being told. If you don't know, you don't know. So that's a simple fact. But it's 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 frustrating, and I I can hear it in people's when you speak to people about the federal government, the disappointment and. It's sad to say that we we could be supported so much more by him, and instead he he's open to backstabbing us any any chance he can get. That's harsh words. Do you it truly is feel harsh like... words. Okay, continue. So it it is harsh words, and it's not something I use lightly. But how often do we hear in the news? What do we hear about Alberta when we read the news of CBC? How often do we hear the negative comments, the negative reports? And the other negative report, and this is me going on a bit of a economic bend here, but Edmonton is not northern Alberta. They need to stop saying that. <laughs> I think anything is anything North Alberta is technically anything I would say higher than Grand Prairie up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but he, he, even then, even then, people up in high level and say, you're not North, we're North. So <laughs> it's all uh, it's all in the image. But I, I completely get that sentiment that Edmonton is not north to me that's central Alberta but that's just my own personal feelings there um do you think the your the energy industry do you think your region can survive another few years of prime minister trudeau if he doesn't change his ways talking to some of the oil and gas sector people as we do it's going to be tough it's going to be really tough. And mm -hmm. that is a worry for all of us. And it should be a worry for all of us because not only is it affecting oil and gas, but it's affecting our farmers. Our farmers are the ones that feed Canada. Northern Alberta is known for its crops. And this carbon tax is, is just hurting farmers. They're, they're not the big money makers that it's sad to say people think they are because they have a lot of debt, but this carbon tax is really hurting them. Final word to you. What's one thing you, we talked about what you'd want to say to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, but we have listeners across Canada who are municipally minded, who, like you said, probably like, I think you said it best. You don't know what you don't know, Right. And what's one thing you, what's, what's the message about our energy industry that you would want to tell them? So you talked about what you want to tell Prime Minister, but what's the message you'd want to tell the rest of Canada? I think a picture says a thousand words. So I want them to come up and tour us. I want them to come up and experience Northern Alberta because then they would understand why we talk that Northern Alberta is different than Southern Alberta. We're very different to urban municipalities. And until you have that vision, it's very hard. You can put a thousand words out there, but will they, will un will they ultimately understand? Likely not. So we're extremely happy when we do hear of ministers. Minister Sigurdsson is the latest one that we call a road trip around Northern Alberta and you really get to see us and you really get to experience why we keep continually advocating that why we need our infrastructure, why we need support from, from the government for our bridge falls, et cetera, because it's huge amounts of money. And without the transportation sector, how can the oil and gas get around anyway? How can our residents move around? How can our farmers move around? 
So I'd like them to come up and really tour us, really come and meet Northern Alberta. Thanks so much for tuning in for another great episode of Municipal Affairs. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our great conversations that we have coming up and in-depth analysis of everything that is going on from coast to coast to coast when it comes to municipalities. If you haven't already, head over to the Cross Border Interviews website and hit that support the show now. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support link in the show notes below, or as I said, head over to www.crossborderinterviews.ca now and support the show. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.